we're going to talk about some stuff today. Woo! Have you guys been learning anything since you've been coming? Yeah? Okay. So guys, we're going to talk about something today. We're going to talk about what's in the bread. Okay? But not only that, we're going to talk about the fire. So, but we're going to start, we're going to just start off with some prayer and then we're going to have at it. Is that okay? So I remember I was talking to you guys about wanting to break down some parables and figure I'll break a couple down if that's okay. Is that all right? Can I break some parables down? Yeah, and then just uh, during the Bible study, we were talking about the eunuch. There's a verse in Acts chapter 8, verse 26, and one of the guys was asking me about a eunuch, about, you know, what had happened here, and I'm going to break that down too. So if you guys don't mind, we're going to start off with prayer, and we're just going to have at it, okay? All right, for you guys that are watching at home, just uh, you want to share this with some people. If you, want, uh, if you want to get a hold of what it is that we're doing, just send us an email. It'll be down here on the bottom. But everything that we're going to do is going to be based on the Word of God. I don't like to assume certain things. I like to go to the Word. And everything's in the text. So we're going to start off with that today. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for who you are for us. And we just thank you that you're going to bring us to the realities of your Word so we can walk out your kingdom with a better reality and better understanding of who you are. You say in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, that grace and peace be multiplied unto us through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior and through God. So we just thank you that we're going to walk this out and you're going to reveal some things to us. You're going to allow your amazing, amazing kingdom leaven to flow through this Bible study and that it expand and that we'd be able to walk out everything that you are. So we just thank you, Holy Spirit, enlighten us, open our minds and teach us to walk out everything that you've commanded us to do through your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So guys, I wrote down some verses up here, but um, I'm thinking, should we start off with Matthew 13 and go all the way down, or should we hit Acts? I think we'll just do uh, Matthew 13. I don't know why I asked you guys. I think we should just do that. So. so while I was writing this down on the board, I actually ran into something, and it just kind of stuck out, but I'm going to talk about it here in a little bit. So we're going to start off with Matthew chapter 13. We're going to start off with verse 1. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some fell, some seed fell by the wayside, and some fell, some, excuse me, and fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony place where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had not deepness of the earth. And when the sun was up and they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up. And choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Before we break this down, let's just break down what, what he's talking about when he says a seed. So we know that whenever we, we hear seed, it's something that has to be sown. Can we agree with that? So it has to be planted. And what I love about a seed is it takes time. And sometimes we forget that when we're out there preaching the word of God, we're going to break down the parable. But everything takes time. When you're sowing the word, when you're throwing seed, everything takes time. Sometimes we forget that. It's one of the main parables that Jesus uses when he talks about the seed and the sower because it's our job to sow the seed. Sometimes, nine times out of ten, when we're sowing the seed, we don't have the patience when we're sowing seed. And sometimes when we sow seed, we want to dig it up, and we don't allow the seed to take root, just in that. So let's break down what he's talking about. He explains this, this parable, but I want to get to the parables he doesn't explain, okay? So I'm going to get through this. Here we go. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why do you speak unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Okay, so we can confirm that Jesus is in a boat. Is this right? And so the people that are in the boat are his disciples. Is that right? 
And the people that are not in the boat are the people that are just listening to the parables. So when he's saying that this mystery is being revealed to you, which means that you're going to hear what this is about. This is going to be for you. They're not going to hear what you're going to hear, but you're going to hear it. Okay, so let's just move on from here. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see not, and hear they hear not. So it says, because they see, seeing, and see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So what he's saying is they're seeing something, but they're not really seeing it. They're hearing it, but they're not really understanding what's going on. And when I was writing this down, I found another place in Mark chapter 8, chapter uh, 8, verse 17 through 18, where he's saying this to his disciples. So here he's saying that these people, they see, but they don't see, and they hear, but they don't hear. But then you find out later on that Jesus is addressing his disciples with the same thing. I'm going to read it to you before I go any further, because I just... I just realized this as I was writing it down. So it's in Mark chapter 8, 17 and 18. Now, remember, when this is happening, let me, let me, let me put you into speed re real quick. Instead of reading the whole thing, I'll tell you what's going on. So they had just got done feeding the multitudes. And it says that their hearts were hardened. I'm going to start here at 12 uh, and 14. So this is 8.14. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they any in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. So they're thinking, all right, what is he talking about? Is he talking about we need more bread? Because here in 16 it says, And they reasoned among themselves saying, Is it because we have no bread? And when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, Why reason you, because you have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand, have you heard, and hear not. So what he's saying is you see, but you don't see. You hear, but you don't hear. So first he's telling the crowds that, and now he's telling his disciples that. So his disciples are now in the exact same position that the people were in after he had revealed truth to them. So I'm going to keep going. Having eyes, see you not, and having ears, hear you not, and do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves among 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took, took you up? And they said unto him, Twelve. And when, he seven, and, and when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments did we take up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, how is it that you do not understand? That's mind-boggling, right? Because you're like, we don't even understand. We don't even understand what you're saying here, Jesus. I'm going to show you what he's saying. Very interesting. So the 5,000, he's saying he fed 5,000 with five loaves. Now the five loaves represent the full commandment of God's word. That's the five books of Moses, the Torah. So he's saying that the five books of Torah, he fed 5,000. Now the 5,000 represent the Jews because it's five, and the five always represents the nation of Israel because of the five books. So he's saying he took the five loaves, which is the entire law, and he fed the Jews, and the reason that there was 12 baskets means that there was enough for all of them and the tribes. The bread. Okay, we're going to talk about the bread. What's in the bread? Okay? So he gives them the bread. So then later on, he feeds 4,000. And we know that the number four represents the Gentiles. So he took seven loaves. And there's no mention of fish here when it comes to the seven loaves. And the reason there's no mention of the two fish is because the two fish represent the two tablets, which is the law, the Ten Commandments. Right? So he can't give them the law of Moses because they're Gentiles. So all he can give them, the completeness of God, which is the, God, the love of God. And so he hands them the loaves and there's seven left over. Jesus is giving the Gentile everything because they're not under the law. 
So what's in the leaven that he's giving them? This is what we're going to address. Like, what's in the leaven? What's going on? They don't know what's going on. They're like, okay, you're talking about the leaven and the Pharisees. So what's in the Pharisees' leaven? So Christ has a leaven, and the Pharisees have a leaven. And it's what's in the bread, okay? Now, the bread is something that we eat because Jesus is the bread of life. But Jesus has leaven, and it's called the kingdom of God. And it's everything that's inside of us because he said the kingdom of God is within you. Because he's the bread of life, and what's inside of him is the kingdom leaven. It's the Holy Ghost and everything that causes the kingdom to expand. And so they eat from Jesus. We eat from Jesus because he's the leaven. And so we eat from that leaven in hopes that it will expand the kingdom. It will expand us. Now the Pharisees have also a leaven. And this is why it says, be careful of the leaven, because he was showing them that the kingdom was expanding. That, look, we're going to take this bread, and they're going to eat it, because man shall not eat off bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that's the leaven that's in the bread. So when he's feeding them, he's saying, beware of the leaven that's in Herod and the leaven that's in the Pharisees, because what they're expanding is not a kingdom of heaven. It's an earthly kingdom, and you got to be careful. But they don't understand this. So now he's saying that you see, but you don't see. So how do we know this is a teaching? How do we know this is what Jesus is doing? And it's right here. Here's the, here's the drosh, right? Here's, here's the hidden jewel that explains it. And it's right here in 22nd. And he comes, Bethsaida, okay? This is after he says, do you not understand? Right when he says, do you not understand? So how is he going to make them understand? And this is how he does it right here. And he comes to Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man. They bring a blind man unto him. And he besought him to touch him. So they're bringing a blind man to him. He's with them, right? He's with the 12. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. So he's taking the blind man away from everybody. And he takes him away just with the 12. You see what he's doing? Because he's got him by the hand and he's taking him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and he led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw. And he looked up, and he said, I see him in his trees walking. What's that mean? That means he doesn't see clearly. See what he's doing? He doesn't see clearly. So the disciples are watching, and Jesus is saying, that's how you see. You see how he sees? That's you right now. You don't see clearly. You don't see what's going on. Because here he goes on to say this. And after that, he had put his hands up again in his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored. And he saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his household, saying, Neither go into the house nor tell any man um, any in the town. This is what Jesus is doing. Jesus is using the blind man as a tool to show his disciples that they're not seeing clearly. And he's saying, this is how you see right now. See how this man only gets partial sight? If you listen to me, if you hear what I'm saying, if you understand what I'm talking about, you're going to see clearly what it is that I'm trying to show you with the bread and with the leaven. We're going to go there in a little bit. But he used it because it's the only time Jesus prays twice. This is the only time. And I know a lot of Christians will tell you, hey, we got to pray twice like Jesus did. But if you don't understand how Jesus taught, he used everything as a prop. I hate to say this when I say prop because there was people involved. So I'm not saying he didn't love people. What I'm saying is that he was a rabbi and he always taught. So whenever there was somebody around, he would use that as an opportunity to show them what he was talking about. Like you guys hear about, the, remember the guy that was, uh, he was paralyzed and he was, he was on a mat and the friends brought him in through the roof. He was teaching the question is, what was he teaching about? And it comes right out. He says, sins be forgiven. Do you remember that? He didn't say be healed. He says, sins be forgiven, which means he was teaching on forgiveness. And he used the guy on the mat to show him what forgiveness looked like. He didn't say be healed. He said, I forgive you. Sins be forgiven. Pick up your mat and walk is basically what he did because of that. He got up and he walked. And then he asked, what's easier to say, sins be forgiven? Or pick up your mat and walk. But the teaching is about forgiveness of sin. And when you understand what sin is, there was a sin in his life that had him on a bed. And we did the teaching at the school about what sin is in depth. And sin is anything that you walk out in the flesh. This man's sin was so strong that he couldn't even walk. 
It had total power over him. And we talked about that in Mark chapter 5. So I'm going to keep going. So I wanted to address that. I was talking about they don't see. They need to see clearly. He shows them with the blind man. Now, if you guys have an issue with this, that, hey, you know, I don't believe that that's what Jesus did, then you have to show me another verse where Jesus had to pray more than once. And this is the only time you see it, right? This is Matthew 13, 13. Therefore spoke I to them in parables, because they see, they seeing, see not. In hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. If you guys ever read that in Isaiah, he's actually talking about... um, if you go to, to Isaiah, he's talking about the seed. He's actually talking about that he's the seed. So he's, pro- he's talking about he's the seed in that parable. But I want to keep going because there's something that I want to cover. And in them is fulfilled the prophets of Isaiah 15. And for the people's heart is waxed, 15. And the people's hearts is waxed, gross. Their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be uh, converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for, your, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things that you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and they hear them not and they hear them, excuse me. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. And this is the parable of the sower, 1319. When any man heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he that receives the seed by the wayside. But he that receives the seed into stony place is the same as he that hears the word and Anon with joy receives it. Yet hath he not root in him Self, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. So he pretty much explains that. But he that receives the seed unto good ground is he that hears the word and understands it which also beareth fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold and some sixty and some thirty. So that's self-explanatory. But I'm going to show you how the next one is not self-explanatory, and he's setting you up so you can say, okay, he explained this one, but now explain this one. So this is what Jesus is doing. He gives you the answer to the first parable, and he explains it to you, and then what he'll do is he'll give you another parable, and then he'll say, so now what I've applied here." Let's see if you can apply it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay? Right? Hey, guys. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe to my channel. If you liked it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this content, about this video. And uh, please don't be afraid to share this. And if you like this, go ahead and hit that like button, thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to turn your notifications on. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being a part of Royal Family International University. Don't forget to turn your notifications on.